Well, uh, good morning. Thank you, Codex. Thank you, Royal Society of London. Rene, Adam, Nick, great presentations. I will keep it very simple. So I work at Consensus. It's one of the blockchain technology firm. Uh, built a lot of software developments, a lot of software products. I work as the head of operations, and I'm the founder for an anti-money laundering software built by Consensus. I will be discussing future of digital assets, but as we are in London, it's a financial hub, I guess everybody wants to know what is the next big thing, isn't it? Or is anybody interested in knowing what is the next big thing? Maybe you, sir. Okay, so before we understand what is the next big thing, we need to understand this question a little bit deeper. Now, in a context, we need to understand, first of all, what is the thing? What is big in that thing? And what is the next in that big thing? So in 2008, we've been introduced to Bitcoin network. We've been introduced to blockchain technology. Rene mentioned things about it. Adam mentioned things about it. So I would not go over there. But what big happened in that thing is Ethereum network. With the possibilities of smart contracts, you could do more. I would not go to discuss cryptocurrencies because that was something totally different, right? Because we're talking just tech itself, not the solution based on the tech. And what is next in that big thing is the tokenization. You mentioned about a premium watch can be tracked. That's great. That's authentication. But how you can digitally own it so you can prove that this is mine? So tokenization, I will be speaking very simple language and during the presentation, in case if you do not understand, just raise your hand. I'll try to be even more simple. So tokenization is the process of just creating a digital asset. So any sort of information that you have, you can just simply tokenize it, any data. Your phone, any produced laptop, either watch, Porsche car, or anything. You can just, any sort of information, uh, you can create it as a digital asset. Those who use Instagram, when you make a picture, that's your digital asset. But how you can tokenize it, Using cryptography, you can tokenize it and own it. So that's a simple tokenization, which is doable using the big thing. What is the major advantage of tokenizing? Uh, it does very simple things, but they are very powerful. For, for example, it just simply extend the access of an asset class. So if I have my laptop, and I need to sell somebody in Singapore, I can just prove that it's mine, and that person can pay me just right now, without me going to the London Stock Exchange, <laughs> putting the shares or something. It's just really, really fast. It just made it like a, it can just convert any asset like an Iron Man, super capable. And to go to next is like, it can just make any illiquid asset more liquid. For example, a painting from a painter from China or, or from India. You know, that painting is not usually an illiquid asset. OK, people in India can buy. Maybe in that city can buy. But how you can make this more liquid? So in general, it just optimizes the capabilities of an asset. And uh, as Rene mentioned, the authentication is possible. So you see the complete chain, who did it, who owns it, and everything else. This tokenization creates an opportunity. Right now, the current market says it is $111 billion. That's a statistics. Usually, uh, I can say, OK, I've spent 14 years in investment banking. I've done a lot of statistics. And I do not believe in statistics, because you can just always change the way you want to and display what you want to. But in general, I would say it's really a massive opportunity about digital assets. Some people predict that by 2030, the market going to be $3.1 trillion for digital assets. I see it can go even beyond. 
3.1, yeah. So how are you going to see it? You know, I speak with my mom every morning. So when I speak with her, I explain her what I do almost every morning. So I need to speak very simple language because she doesn't understand much of tech. So in integration of this tech, of digital assets, most probably you will not see that you're using some digital assets because most of the integration will be done on the back end. So we are more like a back end engineers, you know, who are just fixing things, but you see the nice fine product like this watch or the Porsche car, but they're, they're back end engineers who are developing things. So probably most of the digital assets or uh, technology will be implemented in the back end. So I just mentioned one name because everybody's familiar. So Libra, for instance, by Facebook has a larger user base. They will, you will use it. But uh, you know, there is no major change of experience. So you will be using your Facebook or Messenger just in a way. I'm not trying to promote them. I'm just saying that that can happen. So on the front end, you will not see a lot of changes. But in the back end, the things that you will be using on a daily basis, they will be just more powerful, more capable. And of course, the, one of the first place where you see digital assets are making change going to be investment banking and business processes and fintech, because that is where you have a huge amount of transactions. Financial assets are already built up in such structure. So when I say, OK, you can sell your mobile phone on, on any internet portal in South Africa, OK, that's doable. But the first thing you can do with financial assets, like bonds, equities, swaps, and some financial products. I think I will have a lot of time for you. So I will just be even more slower. I have only 10 slides. I will just wanted to spend time with you just you know, speaking very basic things about digital assets. So there are going to be three R required. Uh, it is not a policy by anybody. I just came up with this. Uh, a, regulations. Uh, people in the blockchain world, all, okay, I'm not a techie, so I work with a lot of tech. So I'm the only one guy who's not techie, but everyone else in my team is super tech. And all the time, oh, we don't need government, or oh, we don't need this, we can just do everything by ourselves. But no, it's not true. You always need governance. You always need government. Uh, who can just, you know, control and the, who can, not in your control, but also protect, you know? those people who do not understand much. So I think regulations is one of the key part. And regulations, I would say, they, are, they have been already various initiatives by US SEC. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody is aware about Switzerland. They have an exchange called SIX, but now they have a new exchange called 6DX, which is a pure exchange for digital assets. With, they call it with Swiss precision. That's very nice. I like it. They, they talk like this. They even do like this. And there are also multiple private reg tech firms. Uh, I can name some of them. Probably you know Chainalysis, Elliptic, CypherTrace. They have been heavily funded. There is a claim by Forbes that this year, next billion dollar company would be Chainalysis. Unfortunately, that's my head-to-head -head competition. I'm also a founder for AML company, so we are also into the regulation space. So if any one of you or any product would use any digital asset based on Ethereum protocols, there are so many underlying assets, so we can just regulate it. But regulations is one of the first thing. The second thing you require is the resources. So in order to make digital asset, you need a lot of infrastructure and tools. So for instance, IBM did a great job in building lots of infrastructure, lots of tools. JP Morgan started with Quorum, and they're also doing a lot. Many banks now are building lots of infrastructure and tools for society to build things. Similarly, I'm from Consensus. Uh, other company do a lot of other things and build tools, but at Consensus, we just build tools. So we fully focus on building software products to increase the speed so that people can get into this universe much faster, just to speed up the process. So we are one of those people. 
in the market. So the market readiness from the knowledge, for example, 60X is another example where the resources are available. So if you have digital asset, you do not know where to launch it, go to Switzerland, launch it at 60X. And then we have a revolution. Once a digital asset is published in the market, you will see it's like a super capable asset. So um, I will save three and a half minutes of yours. And uh, I just make, uh, let's say, announcement. In my opinion, the next big thing is digital asset. That anything that you have, any information that you know, you can just monetize it. And you can do it with complete authentication. You can have it in your pocket. I can buy a phone from China, Singapore, or whatever, sell it in the US, and you can easily track that it belongs to me. In the authentication process, the challenge you face, imagine if I have a unique QR code, and I'm selling a medicine. So when I'm selling this medicine with the same QR code, usually, you know, bad people, I call them, they're very smart. Yeah? They can copy this, and they can print it again and again, and there are a lot of ways they can cheat. But if you own that asset, and with your private keys, yeah, you can just prove that it is yours, then there can be 20 similar assets, but only one is real, and that belongs to you. And this is a, maybe I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So, so yeah, so next big thing, in my opinion, are digital assets, and I will be happy to uh, discuss this during the Q&A. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. <laughs>